IRS won't say why agents are training with AR-15s. This is posted by Jim Hoft, and uh, Fox Carolina reported on this, and we're going to go to that video right now. Congressman Jeff Duncan wants to know why he saw IRS agents training with powerful semi-automatic rifles. Duncan says he witnessed the agents firing AR-15 with 30 round magazines at a Maryland federal law enforcement training center last month. Duncan was touring the facility with Homeland Security officials as part of his investigation into the amount of ammunition purchases the agency conducts. Well, now he's investigating why an agency that collects taxes needs agents armed with such big guns. Well, people are going to start getting tired. I guess I can answer that question. People are going to be tired of paying their taxes to a government that is spying on them, that is using that money to create drones to spy on them and bomb little children and innocent people in other countries. They're, they're just going to get sick and tired. They're going to get mad as hell. They're not going to take it anymore. And then they're going to stop paying their taxes. So you're going to have these goons from the IRS, these parasites, these despicable people going around and putting guns in people's faces, killing Americans who don't want to give their money up to you know, the government who's just doing evil things with it. I have a friend who hasn't paid his taxes in years, and he, and he was a veteran. He, he actually went and fought for this country. He, went, he actually was training uh, death squads, he found out later, at the School of the Americas. And now he goes down and every year he protests that. But he refuses to pay his taxes. And it has been a burden on his life. He's not allowed to get a, a decent job because eventually the IRS catches him and forces him. They try to garnish his wages so he moves on. But, you know, it's, he's... Mad as hell, and he's not going to take it anymore. That's what's going to happen. That's why you have him training with the AR-15s and buying all these bullets, because people are going to stop paying their taxes. That's coming right down the pike. Moving on, and we have a bunch of articles about the Zimmerman case up today. I just grabbed one of them, and it, it's, it's with this judge who <laughs> looks like she got her White House talking orders uh, from the White House, trying to compel Zimmerman to get up on the stand and defend himself and open himself up for cross-examination, violating his Fifth Amendment. She says, you know, you don't have to answer any questions, but I'm going to start asking you questions. And here's the article from Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones. Judge in Zimmerman case pressured by Obama administration. Speculation is raging that the judge in the George Zimmerman case could be uh, could have been put under pressure by the Obama administration after she staged a bizarre outburst during which she interrogated Zimmerman while repeatedly silencing his lawyers. And here is that clip. And have you made a decision, sir, as to whether or not you want to testify Your in Honor, this case? I, I object to that question. Okay, overruled. Do you have you made a decision as to whether or not you want to testify in the case? I, I, I object to that question. I think that's. Mr. Overruled. The on Mr. Zimmerman's behalf, that decision. I am asking your client's quest, your client questions, please, Mr. West. I, I object to the court inquiring of Mr. Zimmerman as to his decision about whether to, or not to testify. Your objection this... is overruled. You do not come into my court and tell me what to do. I'm going to railroad this jury into a guilty verdict if it's the last thing I do, Mr. Lawyer and Mr. Zimmerman. Now, would you just answer some questions, Mr. Zimmerman? Look at that lady. I bet she's really proud of what she does. She probably has a very uninformed jury sitting there, too. And one of the things that actually you get with every order at InfoWars is this little citizen rule book here. It's not very big, not many pages. 60 pages, but 60 very small pages. You can get a 10-pack, a 20-pack, and let me just show you what the first section is. Table of contents. Section one, a handbook for jurors. Oh, look at that. It talks about jury duty. You are above the law, your jury rights, the law of the land, the Ten Commandments, the Communist Manifesto, and how all that works into the way juries are framed these days. Uh, jury tampering, giving up your rights, a jury of your peers. Um, basically everything that you need to go in there and basically take over a jury okay we've had a couple jurors one was a um, he was a grand juror Hoppy Heidelberg who we've had on the show many times he's dead now rest his uh, God rest his soul and he talked about how they gave him a jury handbook and he actually read it he was one of the grand jurors on the Oklahoma City case and he started asking questions and wanted to bring in witnesses and they said you know, Mr. Heidelberg, you know, they went to his house, the FBI agent said, are you going to cause any more trouble? And, and he kind of laughed it off, like, you don't scare me, you little punks. He's like, I read, I know what's in the book. I read the book. We also had another case. Uh, David Knight interviewed this guy, the New Jersey weed man, who actually 
was able to get jury nullification in two cases against him. So it can be done. All you have to do is inform the jury. Are you yourself become an informed juror? Okay, if you're on a jury, pass out some of these citizen rule books to the rest of the jurors. Explain you guys have the right to look at the law and the facts, not just listen to the judge, ramrod her decisions down the throat that are coming from Washington. And we covered earlier, uh, I think it was yesterday with David Knight, how the Justice Department was actually funding protests, funding protesters to come down there, setting up infrastructure so people could protest this Trayvon Martin situation, which is just blown into a huge story, which normally this thing would not have made it out of the statewide news, but now it's huge news. Uh, moving on to a, a Breitbart story, California Senate passes bill permitting non-citizen poll workers. And they have the sign here, vote a key, which also means vote here. Uh, Senator Norman, Norma Torres, a Democrat from Pomona, who placed the Botana bill before the Senate, said that the non-citizens could help the 2.6 million Californians whose English skills are limited. These individuals have an absolute right to make fully informed voting decisions on election day. I wonder what they're going to be telling them to vote for. Vote, vote for them to take your guns, take your guns and more entitlements, because that's why they're there, to get those guns and get those entitlements. And I'm sorry, I don't think you should be able to work at a polling center for the United States unless you're a United States citizen. I don't think you should be able to vote unless you're a United States citizen. That's how it works in every other country in the world. I can't go to Libya and vote in their elections. Why should we let people from Mexico come and vote in ours just because they decided they want to move here? No, you become a citizen, then you get to vote. That's how it works everywhere else in the world. Why do we have to be different? Because we're so free and we have so much money that we can just pay all these entitlement programs. Interesting. Uh, a, a group that has been working on this voting situation, they've gone in and, and, and tried to get vote for dead people, they've tried to vote as Eric Holder, is uh, Project Veritas and James O'Keefe, and his new book just came out, Breakthrough, Our Guerrilla War to Expose Fraud and Save Democracy. It's by James O'Keefe, the founder of Project Veritas, and he's going to be on the show, I think, tomorrow with Alex Jones, talking about this book. But they've been doing a lot of good work, a lot of good citizen journalism, just basically getting cameras, going out there, and creating the news, because the mainstream media is not going to report on this. You know, they'll go out and report on a, an oil changing facility that's ripping people off. But they're not interested in looking at the power of government and when that is corrupt. They're really not interested in that. That's not their bread and butter. It's basically to keep, you know, talk about consumer things and who's wearing what and where we're going. It, that's why it takes citizen journalism. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.